What's going on, Bomb Cherry? Frog Box, what's good? Haven't seen you in a while. I'm gonna be doing. Oh, good afternoon. Oh, okay. I guess you're in a, you're in a New Orleans, so you're in a different area than I am. So, it's still morning time for me. It's 10:04 in the morning. So I'm going to do a video or a stream, I should say, stream by request. This is a, a topic that I was requested to address. And uh, I'm going to talk about it for a little bit. And uh, then I'm going to I'm going to open it up. If, any, if anybody wants to jump on and give their input on the issue. But we're going to talk about Roe versus Wade. And the reason why I titled the video Roe versus Wade revi revisited is because this issue is being brought up yet again. It's a it's been a topic of contention since the inception of the Supreme Court precedents, Roe versus Wade. When we talk about Roe versus Wade, let's 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 get into the specifics of that. So Roe versus Wade. It was a Supreme Court uh, case in 1973, and it addressed the constitutionality of laws that criminalize the restricted access to abortions. And the court ruled uh, by majority that a right to privacy under the due process clause of the 14th Amendment extended to a woman's decision to have an abortion. Uh, but, that, but that this right must be balanced against the state's interest in regulating abortion. So, protecting women's health and protecting the potentiality of human life. Uh, that's at kind of at the state's discretion to a certain degree. Um, what's going on, BGS? So um, again, that law uh, or that Supreme Court precedent was upheld in uh, 2007. And, uh, case called Gonzalez versus Carhartt. Um, and there's been other cases, you know, that have addressed the constitutionality of Roe versus Wade, you know, since then, but I won't get into all of those. But again, it's been a hot button issue. So let's talk a little bit about what abortion is. And I'm gonna go by the Merriam Webster dictionary uh, definition of abortion. Um, and it's the termination of a pregnancy after accompanied by resulting in or closely followed by the death of the embryo or fetus such as spontaneous expulsion of a human fetus during the first 12 weeks of gestation or induced expulsion of a human fetus okay so when you say abortion abortion can technically mean miscarriage uh, but in this particular context i'm going to stick to uh, an induced abortion <clears throat> so when we talk about you know, a uh, development of a fetus, you know, uh, 37 weeks is considered, you know, full term. So 37 weeks gestation, that's when we consider full term. Anything before 37 weeks, uh, we consider that premature or preterm. <clears throat> if the uh, fetus dies in uterus after the point of viability, which is about, I would say, what, 24 weeks or so, yeah, 24 weeks is about the generally considered the term, uh, the the viability milestone outside of the outside of the uterus, outside of the womb. So anything uh, 
so if the fetus reaches the reaches the point of viability but then dies inside of the actual uterus inside of the womb um, this is without an abortion is considered a stillborn once that child is delivered <clears throat> so when we look at pregnancies only about 30 to 50 percent of conceptions go past the first three months or the first trimester uh, so when we talk about pregnancy it really is miracle every birth is pretty much a miracle birth sheep stay sleep what's going on with you so um 50 50 to 70 percent rate of miscarriage so when you talk about all pregnancies it's about a 50 to 70 percent you know rate of miscarriage with these numbers in, in mind um so a lot of women have miscarriages and don't even know they're pregnant you know it may look like a heavy menses or um just may pass the pregnancy unknowingly because in the early stages of pregnancy there's not going to be uh, a lot of bleeding compared to later on in the pregnancy if that uh if you do have a miscarriage so sometimes people don't even know um let's see here most of the uh miscarriages are, are usually by uh chromosomal abnormality so um basically the nature has nature has a way of uh, checks and balances so a lot of times the the fetus will spontaneously abort if there are some errors in genetic coding and genetic transcription and the, and there's issues with the fetus uh so a lot of a lot of the a lot of the miscarriages that experience that you experience are usually would have been a baby that wouldn't have that would have had a high mortality rate anyway or would have had some type of uh, abnormality. So those are usually the reasons why you have a, a miscarriage. Other than that, there's trauma that, that can induce it, miscarriage as well. Um, as far as uh, another milestone, uh, you can have a heartbeat as early as six weeks. So when we look at you know that factor, um, sometimes that tugs on the heartstrings of uh, pro-lifers uh, because they think of it uh a fetus as being life uh when they associate a heartbeat with that fetus okay so when we talk about some of the methods of abortion uh we have both medical and surgical and we usually uh stick to medical uh methods early on in the pregnancy um some of the medications you may hear about maybe uh mifeprestisone um misoprostol and sometimes methotrexate and these uh these medications generally uh number one they're going to interfere with the ability to bring the pregnancy to term um it sometimes inhibits with the activity of progesterone progesterone and um also it will cause a woman to go into labor prematurely and so when you do these medications it's usually a combination of you know two or more drugs and uh, it causes the, you know, it causes a, a woman to go into labor prematurely and the fetus not be viable. So, um, but sometimes with the medical method, uh, you have to go back and check to make sure that the actual fetus aborted. Because sometimes um, if you don't do follow up care, the, the, the fetus may still survive. And oftentimes when you use the medical method and the fetus survives, it's not completely aborted. The, the fetus is going to come out with some gross abnormalities, like totally, totally, totally screwed up child at that point. Um, talk about surgical. Uh, you have a manual vacuum aspiration or electric vacuum uh, aspiration. So the manual is usually like a syringe. Um, and that's usually done really early on in the pregnancy where you don't really need that much suck, much suction. suction. And the electric vacuum pump is a little bit later, but still early in the pregnancy, you use the electric vacuum pump. And uh, sometimes it requires a dilation of the cervix to facilitate the removal of the, of the intrauterine contents. Um, now, there was a procedure called the intact dilation and extraction, uh, which is, is banned in the United States federally. Um, and that involves the decompression of a baby's skull uh, it's very, very, um, I guess, barbaric is what you would consider a procedure. Um, 
Now, when it's banned federally, I'm not sure what that means in the context of state applications, because as we know, marijuana is banned federally, but it's legalized in certain states. So that's something to consider as well. Um, hysterectomy or hysterotomy uh, abortion, which is kind of like a hysterectomy, um, but it's for the purposes of abortion. So it does require an incision. It's, it's a, a, an invasive surgical procedure. So some of the reasons why a woman will get an abortion is that it's harmful to health. Uh, sometimes you, you weigh the child mortality or morbidity. morbidity. Um, if you if you do some genetic testing, you determine that the child is going to have some type of abnormality that will affect that child's quality of life or even uh, survivability, you know, past birth. Um, sometimes they have uh, what you would consider a multiparent reduction where a woman can be born or a woman can be pregnant with uh, multiples like a, maybe a twins or triplets or quadruplets. And perhaps she wasn't planning on having that many children. So she wants to eliminate some of the children in the womb or uh, one of the children, you know, may have some type of defect and she wants to eliminate that child or uh, the sheer volume of uh, fetuses inside the womb is going to affect either the other children's health or the mother's health. So sometimes in that case, let's take, for instance, the octomom, you know, that was a very, very high risk pregnancy because she had uh, she had uh, eight, eight fetuses inside of her. So, um, you know, bringing eight fetuses to term is very difficult, especially when you start talking about full term is nearly impossible. So the, the children will have to be born prematurely because it's going to occupy too much space inside the uterus and it's going to cause all sorts of problems. So they usually deliver, uh, you know, multiples early. And so the more multiples you have, the earlier you have to deliver those babies and it will affect the viability of all of the children. So sometimes people will reduce the number of children um, via abortion. <clears throat> so get into some uh, statistics. Um, each year, uh, the CDC requests abortion data from central health agencies, and they have 52 reporting areas. So that's those are going to be the 50 states, and then the District of Columbia and New York City are separate entities as well. Um, and so the most recent uh, information on the CDC website was available for 2015. And for 2015, data was received from um, only 49 reporting areas. I'm not sure what the 49 reporting areas were, uh, but remember there are 52 areas total. Um, so this information that is available on the CDC website is not complete because we don't have information from all the reporting areas. And secondly, this is by report. Uh, the CDC requests abortion data, but it's not necessarily mandatory that all of these reporting areas actually report to the CDC. So there may be some discrepancies in the information, uh, but the latest data from 2015 is that there were 638,169 abortions just for that year. So over half a million abortions in 2015. Um, generally speaking, abortion is relatively safe. Uh, Relatively, I say that term loosely. When we look at the actual mortality rates, uh, there's only six deaths uh, reported in 2014, which is the latest data for deaths from abortion from complications. But only six deaths out of you know well over half a million abortions in 2014. So very very uh, safe when you look at other medical procedures that are a lot more risky. Uh, abortion is relatively safe. 65.4% um, of those abortions were at eight weeks or earlier. So most abortions happen very early in the pregnancy. Um, remember, it, the full term is considered 37 weeks, so eight weeks is very early. 91.1% uh, are at 13 weeks or earlier. 7.6% uh, are at between 14 and 20 weeks. And only 1.3% are at 21 weeks or later. Uh, about 24.6% of medical abortions are at eight weeks or earlier. 
uh, 64.3% surgical abortions at 13 weeks or earlier. So remember, we generally do medical abortions earlier on in the pregnancy. You know, later on in the pregnancy, you have to go towards a surgical abortion. 8.8% um, of surgical abortions at 13 weeks or later. And then you have some what you would consider uncommon abortions that I'm not going to get into. And that only accounts for at or around 2.2%. Let's see here. So when we talk about age demographics, when we under 15 years of age only represents about 0.3% of abortions. And that's about 0.5 in a thousand when we're talking about uh, uh, per capita. Uh, 15, ages 15 to 19 years of age, 9.8% of the abortions. And that's about 6.7 per every 1,000. Uh, 20 to 24, 31.1% of abortion. And this is where your, the bulk of your abortions are going to come from, that particular age group of 20 to 24 years of age. Uh, 25 to 29 years of age is going to be 27 Point six five or six percent of abortions. Twenty seven point six percent of abortions. Uh, Thirty to thirty four, seventeen point seven percent. Thirty five to uh, thirty five to forty is going to be ten percent of abortions, and greater forty forty and greater is going to be uh, thirty three point five percent of abortions. So it's kind of like a little bell curve when you look at the actual age demographics. Um, Generally speaking, uh, it becomes more difficult to be to even get pregnant, you know, the older you get. So that kind of accounts for that curve. Um, now, let's talk about. Let's see here. So we have uh, what you would call. A partial birth uh, ban that. Basically, uh, when we talk about abortions, a partial birth usually refers to a late term abortion. And it's, it's generally more. Uh, it's a more invasive procedure because the actual fetus is is, is significantly larger. And. Uh, basically. Um, is when a, the, the, the fetus is considered viable outside of the uterus and. The abortion itself, well, generally speaking, uh, you have certain legal ramifications where they consider, you know, parts of the body outside of the uterus as being delivered. So previously, before the ban, what they would do is they would partially deliver the baby, but still have some of the baby inside of the uterus and basically induce fetal demise uh, by surgical means. So. Generally, they would take some type of forceps and like make an incision at the base of the skull and extract the uh, the cranial contents, which decompresses the skull and facilitates the delivery of that of that uh, child outside of the uterus. Uh, that process obviously kills the child, and so uh, that was kind of like the kind of like the loophole because the child was technically killed before it was fully delivered. Uh, now they actually uh, ban that in the United States totally, so you can't do that at all. So now what they do is they usually inject like a solution of potassium chloride or digoxin, uh, which will induce um, a fatal arrhythmia in the fetus. So they take an actual syringe and using ultrasound, they inject it directly into the fetus's heart. And that's how you induce what you call what you would consider fetal demise. And then once you induce fetal demise, then you can actually deliver that uh, stillborn child. Um, which is which is considered an abortion because the, the child was viable at some point and that uh, the actual fetal demise was medically induced. Um, so when we look at the actual. Uh, the Roe versus Wade revisited, uh, we, we're talking particularly about Ohio because Ohio is a. Uh, you know, is a point of contention for abortion. Um, and it has been for quite some time, some of the strictest abortion uh, regulations in the country. Um, 
Since 2011, Ohio cut the number of clinics performing abortions in half to about eight from 16. Um, in Ohio, some of the private hospitals uh, flat out refused to perform abortions. In the uh, facilities where you can't get an abortion, uh, you have to have a, a two appointments prior to the abortion on two separate days. So you have to have some sort of like education and counseling sessions prior to getting an abortion. Basically, they're going to try to talk you out of it. And then um, then once you actually complete that process, you can get the abortion. Um, parental consent is required for minors or you need a judicial bypass. Um, and that's a, a court proceeding where you know, a minor can, you know, bypass the parental restrictions uh, to get that abortion. Um, and there are insurance and Medicaid restrictions in the state of Ohio. So uh, basically you can't, you really can't tap into uh, public funding to assist you in payment for that abortion. <clears throat> so what does all this mean? Uh, well, if pro-lifers can actually bring a case before the Supreme Court, uh, they may be able to get the Roe versus Wade overturned. And why does that? Why is that pertinent now? Because the Supreme Court uh, Justice uh, Anthony Kennedy uh, is retiring, and so when Trump nominates the actual replacement for the Supreme Court of his choosing. Uh, that may tip the scales in favor of pro-lifers and allow uh, a repeal of the Roe versus Wade. And obviously Ohio is waiting for that because they will use that as an opportunity to completely ban abortion in that particular state. Um, and let's just look at it, take a couple examples of some of the states. I'm gonna focus on California, Colorado, Florida, New York, Ohio, and Texas. Again, that's California, Colorado, Florida, New York, Ohio, and Texas. Um, California has some of the more lax, uh, which you would consider lax or lenient abortion laws. Um, there's no specific statute that says it has to be performed by a licensed physician. So uh, maybe even a nurse practitioner or physician assistant uh, potentially may be able to perform an abortion. Don't quote me on that. But again, there's no specific statute that prohibits uh, a licensed independent practitioner other than a physician from performing the abortion. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be performed in a hospital. Um, there's no regulation for second physician participation, you know, and a lot of some states require second physician participation in the event that the the fetus is past a certain uh, period, you know, in that actual pregnancy. Um, now they do have some prohibitions, you know, at viability. So if that fetus is viable outside of the womb, they, now there's no specific time frame. So depending on the actual development of the fetus, some fetuses develop sooner depending on you know nutrition and other factors the health of the of the mother and genetics and things of that nature um so they specifically look at viability of that fetus outside of the uterus uh and if there's extenuating circumstances then an abortion can be granted um there is no specific partial birth ban in the state of california and this is what i was talking about earlier when i said partial birth abortion was federally banned but it's not specifically state banned, just like we have. Again, I'll give you that example about marijuana. Marijuana is federally banned, but there are certain states, as we know, that have legalized marijuana. So we have that contention between the states versus federal. Um, California is very lenient with funding. So essentially, if you wanna get an abortion and you're in proximity to California, that's the place to go. So when we talk about Florida, uh, Florida and Ohio in particular, they have some of the more stringent uh, regulations regarding regarding abortion. They must be performed by a licensed physician. Um, they must be performed in the hospital if the fetus is at viability for Florida and for Ohio if the fetus is at 20 weeks gestation, whether it's viable outside of the uterus or not. 
A second physician must participate at 24 weeks for Florida and at 20 weeks for Ohio. Um, it's prohibited uh, at or beyond 24 weeks in Florida, at or beyond 20 weeks in Ohio. Uh, Ohio and Florida have partial birth bans uh, in their actual states. Uh, you cannot get funds uh, even for medically necessary abortions. That's the key. So you'll have to actually pay for that out of pocket if need be. And uh, now public funding for life endangerment, rape, and incest, I believe, are available in both Florida and Ohio. So those are some of the stipulations to that. Um, other than that, New York and Texas. Uh, New York is kind of middle of the road. They do have some regulations uh, prohibited past 24 weeks and it must be performed by a licensed physician. Uh, but you can get public funding for an abortion. Um, and Texas, Texas a little bit kind of kind of strict and then kind of not. Uh, it does have to be performed by a physician, but it doesn't necessarily have to be performed in a hospital. Um, it can't be performed in a clinic. Um, and it's prohibited uh, past 20 weeks gestation. So that's where that, that stringent nature comes in. Partial births are banned in Texas and no medical, no uh, public funds unless you have uh, life endangerment, rape and incest. So those are the actual uh, basics about abortion. Um, I don't really want to give my particular opinion on abortion. I just want to give you guys some of the facts. Uh, leave that up to you to decide, you know, where you stand on abortion, knowing what you know now. Uh, one point of contention is when we discuss a woman's right to abortion. For those who were proponents of abortion, uh, we have to look at what that means when somebody has a right to something. Because my understanding of rights, there's an inherent responsibility that comes along with that right. Uh, you can't have rights to decide whether or not that child lives. Obviously. When you have the right to abortion, you have the right to decide the fate of that child. So when you decide the fate of that child, you've accepted responsibility. So it's kind of it's kind of odd that here in the United States, we have women have the right to uh, to elect abortion. Yet men are still financially responsible for children that they don't have exclusive rights to. And I believe that's the point of contention that needs to be addressed with regards to abortion. How is it that a woman can arbitrarily decide to abort a fetus? But if she decides to keep that fetus, the man who is presumed to be the father is on the hook financially. So I'm going to look in the chat real quick and see what uh, people people are saying in here. Hey, Shantastic. Um, Sheep Stay Sleep TV, BGS. BGS, Ibmore Master Teacher. And Bomb Cherry, okay. So if anybody wants to get on here and discuss this particular topic, just go ahead and leave your email in the chat. I'd rather... Uh, invite you directly rather than putting in the chat because I don't know if there's any trolls in here right now. Bomb Cherry, are you interested in actually uh, discussing, discussing this? I see you leaving some comments in here. Let's read here. Let's see here. I'm a woman right to choose, but I'm not for abortion. I'm for the woman's right to choose, but I'm not for abortion. 
Yeah, you know, um, Bomb Cherry, I, I, I kind of, uh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn, you know. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a really, really touchy issue. Um, personally, I have a, a, I wouldn't want to be involved with an abortion, but that doesn't necessarily mean I want to restrict the, the rights of others to make that decision for themselves. I'll just put it like that, you know. If it's if it's an issue with me and in, in, in my family, I would rather not have an abortion. You know, if I just I just feel like uh, hmm, it's really a tough issue. But I I wouldn't want to make that decision for somebody else. You know, that's that's up to them. Not everybody has the same concept of morality. Um, everybody has their own opinions on certain things, but we do have to accept that. Uh, that if we're going to consider abortion, oh BGS, let me get BGS on here. Um, black Gnostic. Okay, hold on BGS, I'm gonna send you a um, actual invitation. Okay, I'm sending you one directly through Google Hangouts. And then I'll send one through your email just in case you don't get that one. Welcome, Master Teacher. Hey, Super Tris, what's going on? What's going on with you? Yeah, I thought you were the best person to actually do this. Um, uh, uh, what do you think? What do you What do you think is going to happen with the? Uh, because uh, I know the the, the uh, heartbeat, um, this this heartbeat uh, thing that's going on in Ohio is probably going to go to the Supreme Court. Um. I don't think the heartbeat will be passed, mm -hmm. but not at this point, um, because the heart can, heartbeat can occur as early as six weeks. Just yeah, station. yeah, that's what they said. Yeah, and so I think um, I think they're going to actually I think they're going to try for the heartbeat, and then I mm -hmm. think the heartbeat is 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 is, is not going to pass. They're going to have to go back to the drawing board, and then what I think they'll try to do is. They'll look at other other indicators of life, like a central nervous system activity mm -hmm. and actual fetal movement. Um, so I think that you can have uh, you probably start having fetal movement like around 12 weeks. And uh, so I think that what, what, what will happen is that they will go for that 12 week period. And uh -huh. I, th I think that has a chance of actually getting passed. I think that I think that I think that may actually have some legs on it if they do it that way. How, how many states do you think are actually looking toward this to actually start restricting abortion rights? Uh, probably, I would guess Ohio, of course, and then uh, definitely Texas and uh, Florida. Definitely Florida. I will say perhaps Texas. Strong leaning towards Texas, mm -hmm. but definitely Florida. And then once we actually get those three states, then we'll kind of see like a maybe like maybe about fifteen more states, similar to like what you what you would see in uh, the marijuana laws. It'd be like a trickle effect. Certain states will begin to begin to start adopting it, but there has to be that one state that gets it passed first. So what if um, which ones do you think? Uh, how long do you think it's going to take to uh, get to the Supreme Court? I don't think it's going to take that long because. Uh, uh, there's not enough white babies being born, and they really want to restrict this stuff. Um, when does when is the uh, the new Supreme Court justice sworn in? Um, he, I, I, it, if it should be like January. Okay, if, if so it hasn't happened already. I think um, 
as soon as as soon as they actually i would say maybe like if he gets sworn in january we should actually see something by february mm, really that fast like as far as them actually presenting okay i think that i think they've already got everything together to present i, I i'm pretty sure they have already everything together to present the actual ruling but see here's the thing mm -hmm. if they go for that heartbeat law that's gonna get shot down okay so that's what's going to actually slow things up i think uh but see that's 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 the key like if you it from a legal standpoint should you go for the heartbeat law first mm -hmm. knowing it's going to be rejected then scale back and come back with, a, with like a like a 12-week period uh -huh. or should you go for the 12-week period initially but i see that i think the six weeks kind of sets the precedence and and then you have the twelve week as the compromise. Okay, it'll set it'll, it'll set it'll set the bar, the the limit. Exactly. And then if, when it scales back, then uh, it won't seem as as uh, as harsh. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So that's what I'm thinking is going to happen, um, with this whole thing. Um, it, but but then once we actually look at, you know, repealing repealing abortion. Mm -hmm. Then you have to start looking at men's rights. And I think that's, you know, I think that's going to be the next issue because that's going to raise some actual points of contention because then there's going to be a lot more uh, unwanted pregnancies that are oh, going to be carried to full term. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, did you, I think there was a law, I have to find it again. I think in Mississippi talking about uh, where um, they're actually proposing that, uh, that women, that, that even rape victims, women of rape, have to ask permission before aborting the fetus from the rapist? Yeah, that's, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's that's wild. That's really wild. <laughs> you know, but really and truly, I mean, wow, that's, you know, yeah, see, this is the reason why I don't want to make this decision. You know, I have my own decision, like, regards to people that I'm associated with. If I'm with a woman, I know how I would how I would decide. Yeah. Uh huh. But when it comes to deciding for other people, yeah, in particular scenarios, yeah, like I can't really fathom being in a scenario like that as a woman where I was raped and then I'm now pregnant with the child of my rapist. You know? Yeah, what, 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 what I'm talking about, I'm just looking at it as a, as 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 the landscape of of where things might go. It's not a matter of. Um, you know, cause, because we know, man, when it comes to this kind of stuff, moral doesn't mean very much. OK, exactly. Whatever, whatever, um, you know, whatever agenda that they have, they will push it forward. Well, I mean, when we look at the actual uh, the actual Roe versus Wade, you know, mm -hmm. there's there's specific terminology that's that basically alludes to the to the interests of the states with mm -hmm. regards to abortion. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it, it's already there that, you know, that especially when you're looking at it from a, a macro level mm -hmm. uh, legislators are looking at things and they're not, they're not really looking at it from a personal aspect. Maybe some legislators are, but they're looking at it from what's in the best interest of the state and country. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about abortions, how does that benefit a nation? Because when we look at not only from the actual, when we talk about the, 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 the general populace uh, replacement rate, mm -hmm. We also have to look at funding for public programs. Yeah. And so you have to have a certain number of people to make Medicare, Medicaid viable, um, welfare programs viable. Um, you know, you know, some of these uh, retirement funds and uh, pension plans in order for them to be viable, you have to have a certain number of population to replace the, the Asian population. Mm -hmm. So, it you know if if the birth rate continues to decline it'll be a catastrophe for a lot of reasons yeah because the, the, all those all, all others uh medicare and, and, and uh social security was only supposed to um support maybe was it no more than 10 percent of the population now it's looking like it might be 25 which is way over uh what the system was actually supposed to be set up for and so, yeah, if you have a declining uh, young population, yeah, it's going to be, you know, another 30 years is going to be really disastrous. 
Absolutely. Um, we have to uh, really look at scaling back the uh, access to certain uh, funding mm -hmm. a public standpoint for certain people, especially when we talk about people who are able-bodied. There's a lot of able-bodied people who are collecting public funding for simple things like, you know, I have anxiety, so now I'm disabled, I can't work, or I, you know, I, um, I have PTSD, or, you know, I have, I have a back problem, you know, all sorts of things that when we look at in other countries, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever been to like some of these, some of the foreign countries. Like I've, I've been to Mexico many times. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I've been in Mexico and I've seen people with no arms <laughs> doing construction. Like I seen a guy, he was doing, he was hammering something with his foot. Like he had like the hammer between his big toe. Yeah. And he was hammering and he was like, he was, I mean, I was surprised at how coordinated this guy because he was balancing on one leg. And he was hammering in nails, mm -hmm. and I was like, and he didn't have he didn't have any. Well, he had like a he had one arm completely gone. Then he had one arm that had like a kind of like a, a abnormal like growth, like his arm never fully developed. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it was the arm wasn't usable, so he was hammering with his feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that 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 basically shows you that you know if there's no crutch, that people won't use it. Yeah, there is no yeah. Uh, people don't realize how big the safety net is in the United States. We think we're a, a completely capitalist country, and it's not, and that's not even close to the reality. Exactly, exactly. There's there's lots of there's lots of uh, public funding and programs out there, but I think you know, uh, you know, when we look at people who actually receive public funding, mm -hmm. this is why it's not a big deal. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why. For people that I, I mean, you already know, but I'm just gonna say this for the people that's out there listening. You know, when we look at public funding programs, um, see the actual contributions from the general populace. Um, you know, it's 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 undesirable for the people who actually pay those taxes. Mm -hmm. um, but for the actual business entities and the actual people who are in power, the the oligarchs, the uh, People who are actually considered owners, true owners, yeah, um, they pay they pay considerably more taxes. But here's why they don't really care, because when you pay public, when you pay uh, money that actually is dis disseminated to uh, to the lower echelons of society, mm -hmm. uh, fine from a financial standpoint, who don't make a lot of money, you know, if they're making below the poverty line, you know, statistically, it's statistically proven they're going to spend 100 percent of their actual income, 100 percent. So where's that? Where does that money go? It goes right back in the hands of the people who dispersed it. So this is why they don't care. You know, when you think about, you know, people are, are you know, saying, you know, I can't, you know, these these people are on welfare and people are up in arms about it, but and they wonder why the laws don't get changed because it's better to actually uh, subdue the uh, the have-nots right. by giving them just enough to where they're not revolting. Right. Knowing that they're going to give the money right back to the people that gave it to them in the first place. Yeah. We basically keep you basically you're keeping the system uh, going. Exactly. Yeah. And they found that they found that out in, in uh, Great Britain when um, the Luddites were actually uh, rebelling and tearing up the machines and just not wanting to actually uh, uh, be involved in the, in the system. Uh, that's like um, uh, Ingalls brought Marx from uh, from Germany mm. in, in England. England is where the industrial capitalism actually started. So why would you bring a Marxist or a socialist to um, to to in the, in the heartbed of uh, of capitalism? Because that's what they needed. There had to be a social contract. They had to rewrite the whole social contract. That's where socialism actually comes from. It's the social contract between the uh, the workers or the have-nots and the industrialists. Exactly. Mm hmm. Yeah, they 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 kind of they kind of they kind of uh they're like they're like flip sides of the same coin. They are, you know. Um, yeah, but it, uh, are, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm I, was gonna, I was gonna say the uh, the reason that um, I was wondering about uh, abortion because, like I said, you're involved in not not to say in this particular field, but I'm saying is in the medical field. Um, you would know about which which procedures do you think will pass. And which ones have a, a chance of overturning Roe v. Wade, and what Roe v. Wade will mean if it is overturned? Um, well, 
they, they, they already have stipulations on abortions, you know, as far as like, you know, uh, late term abortion and, uh, you know, and, it's, and but the thing about it is, is that the, there's a lot of uh, state autonomy. Mm -hmm. And this is the again, like I said, with the marijuana, the whole marijuana thing, you know, you have federal regulation that you have some sort of state autonomy. And so if the state, you know, is saying, hey, it's legalized and they're not going to enforce the federal regulations, then what do you do as a federal government? You understand what I'm saying? So uh, even though there's going to be some states that are going to want to repeal Roe versus Wade, there's going to be some states where it's still going to be legal. Yeah. And so people with the means will travel to those states to get an abortion. Yeah, they will. But the thing is, we uh, considerably more expensive and uh, right. uh, more, more, more tenuous. That means the birth rate will go up. Exactly. Because exactly. it won't because it won't be federal because now it can, it can be federally funded. I think Texas uh, stopped the federal funding of abortion and, and some forms of uh, birth control. And the birth rate actually went up, especially amongst black women, which is probably what, not what they desire. But the birth rate went up. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. I think that's, uh, mm. that's definitely um, the point of contention because there's other states that have le that have uh, regulated federal funding as well. Um, I mentioned some of them. I didn't go through all the states because, of course, there's a lot of states. But uh, there, there there are several. There are many states actually that that limit uh, federal funding, mm -hmm. and uh, then there's states that actually allow for like you know cases of rape, incest, or yeah, you know, when it's a risk for the woman's life, you know, things like that. But yeah, that's that's so that's like I was mentioning that the law from uh, I think it's I think it was Miss either Mississippi or Alabama I can't remember which state it was from but it, about the rapist needing permission from the rapist to abort I said if you can do that that's going to go along the MRA is going to jump all over that one and, and 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 how do you think how do you think they'll react to that the MRA well the 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 MRA the, the men's rights will actually because now it's a question of do fathers have uh, rights to the fetus, to right to that baby, or an equal right to that baby. Because now you have to consider the old patriarchal law. Who does the baby belong to? And this is this is the this is the prime. Personally, you know, uh it's hard to enforce a law like that mm -hmm. when a woman can be, actually be pregnant and not inform the father. Mm -hmm. So what do you do in situations like that? You can say, hey, uh you know, you have to have the, the consent of the father, but she can say, I don't know who the father is. Then what do you say at that point? OK, then uh, guess what? <laughs> what happens to child support? If she does that. And see, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Now, when you start talking about child support, you know, state and local government, they're not mm -hmm. going to want to pay to raise these children. They're, the they're welfare. Not. They're not. But the thing is, that's in other words, that's where the game begins. Sauce for the goose. <laughs> yeah. Sauce for the goose. Because it because once you do that, then um it's gonna open up this it's gonna open up a uh, father's rights, not only in uh child support, but also welfare. All all those things will actually open up. What is the right of the father? Yeah. You know, so even in the custody case, do do you uh is it 50 50 or if we're going to enforce a fathers to pay do fathers have the right to actually take possession of their children of their offspring but then what i think they'll look at is well, what's in the best interest of the child they'll yeah. try to spin that somehow they, they would try to spin it but the thing is you know for, for the last what 60 70 years it hasn't even been a question it's been the uh, the tender years doctrine and that hasn't been challenged for 200 years will that be uh. able to be challenged now true yeah this is that's a that's a that's a key point yeah now that's what i'm saying it, it may it may or may not but things are going to get very interesting over the next uh five years because as soon as the supreme court justice um got confirmed all these things are popping up so evidently they were waiting for this guy and then <laughs> i would imagine that if they actually start looking at men's rights and they actually try to grant men's men rights to the child, then they'll probably they'll probably look at child child support and they'll try to scale it back to actually be reasonable where they you can't have these crazy amounts, mm -hmm. you know, 
Because right now it's outrageous. I mean, but we know why it's outrageous because you put it in the hands of the consumer mm-hmm. who's going to spend that money, whereas the, the man is going to actually provision that money for the future and not put it back into the economy. And, and also it gives uh, women incentive to have babies because there's money attached to it. Uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah, because uh, the old incentive for having children on a farm is what? Labor. Yeah. When you cut off the labor, what's the incentive for a woman to have a baby? Or more than one child. Yeah, there isn't any. There isn't any. How, how do you incentivize women to have babies? Attach Pay for the babies. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 attach money to the baby. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. When if it, it, you know if if you if you think about the moral aspect, it doesn't make sense. When you think about the monetary value, okay, now I, you get it. Okay, now I can understand about child support, all this kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be fair because the state doesn't care about being fair. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. exactly. I, I want like like uh, uh, what is his name? He said, "I want my corners." Okay, <laughs> what he said on the wire? I want yeah. my corners. <laughs> That's the state said. I want my babies. I want my two point one one children. Yeah, and uh, but it, more is better too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More is better up to a point. I think I don't think they want more than three. I think uh, the, uh, right around two is where they want two point five, three at the max, and uh, and no lower than one point nine. And then we're at one point seven. And for white babies, I don't know what the last statistics were. I think the last I saw was like one point four or something, one point four five or something like that. The last I saw, maybe lower than that. Depending on how how they classify white. Now, when we talk about, okay, so if you if if they do decide to, okay, so let's just say that the actual abortion repeal goes through, mm-hmm. and now you have stricter regulations regarding abortion. But the issue then becomes, even if general populist birth rates begin to rise uh so does minority birth rates yeah well that's so yeah yeah and i don't think the minority birth rate will be proportionate because you have a higher degree of minorities living in what you would consider poverty Mm -hmm. so the actual methods that are available as far as birth control as opposed to abortion won't be utilized as as frequently so their birth rates will rise disproportionately mm-hmm. to the general populace. Uh, yeah, they will. It, it it will do that. Then, uh, but that is the uh, that's the trade off. But so you so you have a you so you have a rise in birth rates. Mm-hmm. But the actual it may it, it may be a a it may it may be a no rise or it may be a it may be a negative rise. Uh, in relation to other demographics, you see what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So, like, you, you, the, the birth rate may rise. Uh, say, for instance, the birth rate rises thirty percent, but then in other groups, the birth rate rises fifty percent. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like the birth rate never really rose when you compare it to the other groups. Oh uh, yeah, the, no, well, the, yeah, you, the proportion won't. But the thing is, you got to remember there are more. There are still um, more. Uh, white oh women. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So even the the percentage will change. Um, there's still more white women, so okay. the number, so the 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 uh, the number will actually be increase. But then the 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 actual, you know, we see an uptick in uh, interracial unions. Yeah, and so then the actual offspring of the of those uh particular women won't necessarily be considered you know of their same demographic no well, that's when your socialization will have to in, in, will have to come in and actually socialize these the these these uh new offspring to, to add mix ah so then it won't make any difference whether they're white baby black baby whatever it is because they're all going to be uh pushed into the same pool mm. Within, I'd say, 
uh, I will say starting with the Z's and maybe even after. So all these babies will be coming in. Will I be Generation Z or after? Which we probably be pushing the same pool. So it won't matter. A baby will be a baby. Now, what what are your th- what are your thoughts on that? Do you want to see um, abortion repealed, or do you like things the way they are now? Um. Hmm. Uh. I mean, it won't it won't it won't affect the state that you're in, obviously. <laughs> I. The only the only the only reason I would want to see at least uh, a repeal or at least a partial repeal is that it will change the uh, it will change the the, the the mood and the mindset of uh, of, say, like like child support, welfare, well, welfare, I don't really care about child support, uh, father's rights and that kind of thing it will actually start pushing the uh, pushing the pendulum back the other way. I see. So there will be more balance as far as uh, father's rights. Yeah, it will, it'll, it'll raise those. It'll raise those important questions that have been avoided for so long. Because once you open it up, then other things can actually come through. Because it's been pretty much locked down and closed uh, since '73. You know, for for almost uh, 50 years. So if you can open it up, other things will. Act, there's other challenges that will actually uh, come through. Like if you have a Supreme Court that's that's uh, anti-abortion, then Maybe they'll actually be more pro fathers' rights, or more pro uh, pro men, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Where there's, where there's going to be a balance. So, uh, as far as abortion, um, that doesn't really bother me one way or the other because I grew up with uh, with abortion rights. You know, in seventy, well, I remember in um, when I was a uh, a kid, we were actually debating it in uh, in, in middle school about uh, abortion Roe Ro, Ro, Ro versus Wade. And um, so I've lived with it for a very long time. So it really is not that important. But the thing is, what I think is uh, more important is the mood that it will set. If if this stuff actually go- gets to the Supreme Court, even if it doesn't uh, get overturned, it will actually get there. Nothing's mm-hmm. actually gotten there for I don't know how long. I see. Yeah. So even if say the heartbeat, like I said, the heartbeat will set the set the, set the bar. Okay, this is too high. Okay, then it go down to twelve weeks, maybe even twenty weeks. But at some point, there's going to be some kind of a, a, a modification of Roe v. Wade. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. How's it going to affect your field as far as? Uh, I know, you don't, I know you don't work in that particular field, but what do you think is going to what's going to change? Uh, well, uh, that will require an expansion in the uh, birthing centers. You know, they'll have to be, you know, they'll have to be able to accommodate the increase in uh, mother baby uh, services mm-hmm. or, or the need for mother and baby services. They'll have to they'll have to respond to that. Um, you know, my particular specialty, I do service, uh, OBGYN, oh, you know, okay. um, I actually, you know, place lines because sometimes, you know, depending on, you know, the person's vasculature or maybe their actual, uh, you know, other factors like obesity, you know, can affect the ability to get access on them. So I often be consulted to to evaluate them on that regard. So it, it, it does, it does affect, uh, I mean, and, but there's some hospitals that don't, that don't, uh, do mother baby. They okay. don't even have mother baby units. You know, they actually defer those patients to like a, you know, a hospital that, you know, that services, uh, uh, women's health. So, but, you know, and, you know, it's, it's, it's all business in my, and, you know, for my field, you know, there's never a shortage of business as it is. So, I don't think it's like going to really adversely affect my field, mm. uh, but uh, yeah, that'll be an increased need, you know, for people who specialize in mother and babies because uh, that particular specialty is always in demand. They always need staff, you know, for that for that particular specialty, and they and they uh, they pay handsomely for somebody who does that. Although there is a lot of liability, so that's the reason why. 
uh, you know, physicians are kind of reluctant to actually pursue that field. It's generally something you do because it's what you really want to do. It's not something you do specifically for the money because there's other fields that pay more money. I'm talking about physicians here. There's mm -hmm. other fields that pay more money and with less liability. Oh, yeah, because mm -hmm. anytime it's a human life, it's more uh, a fetal life, there's more liability. Yeah, you talk to any any uh, any uh, OBGYN physician uh, who's been a physician for any length of time, mm. uh, they've definitely experienced a lawsuit. Oh, okay, yeah, all of them, everyone, everyone I've ever talked to, they've all they've all been through lawsuits. Some have been through several lawsuits because you know anything happens to the child, you know, cerebral palsy, you know, then they'll they they can sue you even if it's not necessarily your fault. You know, if they can convince, you know, a court that it is your fault, that somehow you contributed to that child's uh, intellectual uh, deficiency, uh -huh. and, you know, then you, you'll be held liable for it. You know, that's the reason why they carry liability insurance and things like that. So it's not like something that they pay out of pocket, but they have to pay very high insurance premiums to cover them, you know, in their practice. So, yeah. Yeah. But I, I know one thing, if, if it does, uh, if it scaled back. Uh, they're going to follow Texas line. We're actually going to start um, uh, not funding uh, um, not only uh, abortion, but also uh, contraceptive. And and that 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 cost is going to go up. And well, you know, you've seen the stats, like at least um, the stats that I actually looked at. Um, Forty percent of, of black pregnancies are actually aborted. So wow. if, just just uh, if they cut that in half. You know, we're, you know, how many babies out of a million babies? We're talking about another 200,000 births. Yeah, the birth rate will skyrocket. It will skyrocket. And, well, and then, and then it's going to increase. Uh, it's going to be kind of like. You know, it's going to be a, a exponential scale mm -hmm. of increase over, you know, not immediately, but like over the course of, say, the next 50 years, you'll see an exponential. You'll see actual logarithmic curve. Mm hmm. And birth rates, because of course, those children that were that were you know that that were brought to full term, they'll in turn have children, and so on and so forth. Yeah, 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 yep. And where if you if you cut out, uh, I said that's just abortion. We don't even know if you if you scale back the contraceptives, because I know the uh, um, in Texas when they scale back the contraceptives, um, I think the black birth rate went up like like five points. Yeah, just just in a, a year and a half. Yeah, yeah that's definitely a factor. Um, yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, we still haven't heard anything else from the the male birth control. Is like that 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 kind of got yeah. pushed into <laughs> the couch cushion. Yeah, well, you know, I I was all for it. I thought maybe just maybe they were gonna let it through. Then I realized, uh, you if you look at the fertility rate, and it's a uh, um, the national fertility rate is like one point one point eight, which is below replacement. I said they're not going to allow a male um, fertility uh, contraceptive <laughs> through. <laughs> it was wishful thinking, because <laughs> especially you know, because <laughs> dudes don't want babies. This they want sex, baby. Yeah, sex. I mean, listen, if they if they put out a male birth control pill, mm -hmm. the birth control the birth rate. Would 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 drop well below replacement. I I can guarantee you it will drop well below replacement. They will have to scale back all of the public programs. <laughs> no, really, it, it would be a catastrophe for the for the uh, for the economy. It would be a catastrophe. <laughs> the thing is, the fertility rate is already one point seven. It'll be below one. <laughs> oh, it, it'll probably. We're talking like like I would imagine the fertility rate, especially with the climate. Mm. Unless they did something specifically uh, to counteract the effects of the implementation of male birth control, like, you know, uh, uh, evaluating men's rights in the country, evaluating uh, family court law, um, mm. making modifications there, evaluating mm. uh, child support, making modifications there. If Unless they did that in conjunction with male birth control, I would postulate that the birth rate would drop to 0.6. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Somewhere around there. I, I, you, you're uh, a little bit more uh, uh, draconian than I. I said like point nine. I said in half, but point six. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. Point six. Point point six. You know, now now the, the now what will happen is 
I don't think that would affect specific demographics like the immigrants, mm-hmm. first, second and third generation mm-hmm. that won't affect their birth rate at all. And so then you'll see a disproportionate rise in people who are first, second and third generation, which then can cause other issues like evaluations of certain laws that, you know, that certain demographics may have an issue with. Mm-hmm. Like when you talk about people who come from, you know, you know, countries in the Middle East, countries in East Africa, you know, and their actual perspective on, you know, laws here in the United States, you know, if their numbers were to rise disproportionate to the people who are actually assimilated, then you will see changes in actual legislation. Yeah, it it would kill the out of wedlock birth rate. That's for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> child, oh boy. Child support courts would just fold up and and, and blow away. Oh, it, it it would it would it would it would really affect the uh the economy of the groupie and the and the, <laughs> and the thought. You know, like you know, no, there's some women who you know, when you really think about this BGS, mm. there are women. And I've known women like this who they grew up like they're like the third, fourth generation. Like they have they have game handed down to them from their great grandmother, their grandmother and their mother. Mm. This is what you do. You're looking for this type of man that makes this type of money. This is how you get them. Mm. So like you, you talk about some of these actual like we talk about the actual groupies that actually land, you know, professional athletes and men of, of, of vast means. Mm-hmm. The, these women are not they're not necessarily anomalies they 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 come from a long line of women who pursue men of means you know and maybe their maybe their their predecessors weren't successful but they learned from their mistakes and they handed down that wisdom to their daughters so what they lack in actual intellectual you know uh strengths they actually make make up for it and you know interpersonal manipulation and uh so these women they they they've like basically they've basically developed the actual subculture and they've honed these actual and honed and refined these skills and this is what they actually depend on and now you're going to take that away from them mm-hmm. you know <laughs> because that's a, <laughs> you, you know you got a woman right now she's getting two hundred fifty eight thousand dollars a month oh yeah uh, blake griffin's uh baby mama yeah. I mean, come on. This is like, this is big business. Yeah, there was one rookie that said, uh, uh, Blake Griffin's baby mama make more than I do. And I'm, I'm in the NBA. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> I didn't think about it like that. Now you bring that up. That's crazy. <laughs> and, and that's not, that wasn't even his wife. I think that was just his like baby mom. I don't think they were actually married. Uh, no, no, they were never married. They're like engaged or something like that, or whatever the case may be. I but don't I, even know if they were engaged. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> from from my understanding, I never saw that he was engaged. It was just his uh his baby mama. Yeah, and she's also yeah. a baby mama from another NBA athlete. Which oh, thought- NFL, NFL, NFL. Okay, yeah, yeah, NFL. Some NFL quarterback. I forgot what his name was, but yeah, but he's only paying fifty eight thousand, or no, fifty. He's only paying like fifty three, fifty two thousand. Jesus, I, 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 hell, it's a great I, I life. Say only, I say <laughs> only loosely. <laughs> she's, a, she's, she's a pro. Well, she's definitely a pro. She's a, she's a, well, she has that, what you consider that, the, the, the Eurocentric uh, beauty features. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if, if that's your preference, when you look at, you know, what, what you would, what you would see on TV, you know, she has that, that you know from facial structure and things like that of course she's a lot taller she was a basketball player herself but uh she does have those proportions and facial features so um it would be more like a status symbol to have somebody like that on your arm so she would be in high demand um and so this is the reason why i believe she was able to garner the attention of those particular men uh because she just exudes that that aura of attention (laughs) <laughs> she's she going to draw stairs wherever she goes. Um, I mean, that's not necessarily something that I would have went for, but you know, uh, it seems like they picked her to to, to actually have their seed. Yeah, he, yeah, that's, yeah. But, he, but then he doesn't complain about how much he pays. 
but you get somebody like that in court, right? Mm. If you're a man and you're going up against somebody that looks like her in court, it's no winning that situation because she's going to uh, she's going to appeal to everybody, you know, especially when you consider the people in the court, you know, are going to be of the general populace. And they're not they're not they're not going to reflect the actual defendant most most of the time. So, you know, you get somebody like that, you know, you're going to lose that case. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm saying. This this maybe this, um, you know, maybe this precedent or this change in the mood of the court will actually, like I say, swing the pendulum back the other way for for us regular guys. Yeah. Yeah, that's a uh, and it's definitely that's definitely the hope. You know, but because you still got a, a a target on your back, right? Yeah, I, I don't I don't have any kids right now. Uh huh. I, I've never been married. Uh, you know, I have had some uh, close calls in the past. You know, <laughs> when I was younger. You know, when I when I was younger, I definitely had some close calls when I was so, younger. So, so and I had some false I had some false alarms too. Somebody tried to trick me a couple times, but <laughs> you know, but they 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 forgot I was in a medical field. I mean, somebody tried to tell me. Mm. The thing was pregnant, right? And then they showed me some ultrasound pictures, uh-huh. right? And then I I counted back, and I was looking at the ultrasound pictures. I could tell how far along that fetus was, and I was like, "See, this is how I know you're lying because this fetus on this ultrasound is far past what it should be." But they 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 didn't think about the fact that hey, you know, this this is a field that I actually work in. But they mm-hmm. tried they tried to trick me. <laughs> they tried. They had, they had, I don't know where they got the older sound picture from, but they tried. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> now that one I had never heard of. Oh yeah, she had to be yeah. pretty smart. Yeah, man. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't going for it. I was not <laughs> going for it. But you know what? This, see, see, even me, like uh-huh. you know, say, say for instance, the the math added up. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still, I'm still getting the, uh, I'm still uh, getting the DNA test. Come hell or high water, because you know I'm just not going for it. <laughs> Down to the bitter end, huh? Down, you know, you, you know, you especially you take too many precautions. It's like, I, I, I know what I did, and I know what I didn't do. <laughs> so this, this, this can't be me. <laughs> well, you're still an active shooter, man. So <laughs> you still, you still, you're still a target. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, you know, now people now, you know, I'm at I'm in a, I'm in an age range where these women are actually telling me straight up. This is what they want. Mm-hmm. And they don't got no time to waste. And then that's like, oh, boy, let me get up out of here. Because uh, they look like they'll try. They'll try to do something underhanded mm-hmm. to, uh, to, to get that to get that uh, to get that baby bump, you know, so. So, so basically, basically the expiration and the the date on their eggs are actually uh, flashing, huh? Yeah, and, and they're they're frantic, you know. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a lot, you know, because especially in the field I work in, you got a lot of women who have a uh, who have a uh, postponed uh, motherhood, you know, for uh, you know professional aspirations, and. Uh, you know, they now they got all the degrees and, you know, and, you know, they're, they're at their, they're where they want to be in their career. Mm-hmm. Now it's like now they want to focus on motherhood. But it's like it, it, it's, it's taking you, you know, uh, 35 years to get to this point. You know, now now you run out of time. I mean, there's some women who are in their, you know, in their early 40s. And it's like, you know, you, you waited a little bit too long because, yeah, yeah, you can get pregnant, but now you now you got to increase the risk of Down syndrome and all kind of all all, all sorts of stuff. You know, it's like yeah, well, yeah, but I'm saying when, once you hit past was it thirty eight, uh, the percentages are you getting pregnant? Go, uh, it's like maybe what uh, less than twenty percent, like maybe fifteen, sixteen percent, something like that. Your your actual a, a woman's fertility actually begins to drop in her late twenties. Mm-hmm. And then you you see the spike at 30, I think it's 33. You start seeing the actual curvature where it actually begins to really spike, mm. you know, and then, uh, you know, it's just all downhill from there as far as actual uh, viability of a, of a fetus. I mean, because we already know, we, I mean, you just look at the actual, uh, you know, the rates of a, of a spontaneous abortion, what would you consider miscarriage? Mm-hmm. You know, you're talking about 50 to 80 percent of all pregnancies and in miscarriages. 
Wow. Yeah. 50 to 80 percent right now. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's, that's... So, 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 so pregnancy itself of carrying a fetus to full term is a miracle. Yeah, and if you and if you're older and not as uh, viable, it it becomes even a a bigger, uh, more daunting task. Yeah, I I, I do see, uh, you know, women who are older, and mm. uh, a lot of times it doesn't end well. Mm. And uh, you know, I've seen women, you know, who have you know, you see them, you see them once. Then work, you know, miscarried and see them again. It's like they trying, and like you can see, like it's like tearing them apart that they can't have a kid, you know. Mm. But you know, when you, when you wait late like that, you know, that's the risk you run. See, you know, a lot of women are looking at, you know, they unfortunately, you know, women are conditioned to, you know, pursue a professional endeavor, mm -hmm. and they're actually. Uh, you know, they're bombarded with choices. As far as men, especially in the internet age and in the, in the social media era, era, they're bombarded with choices. And so, you know, a lot of times women just can't make a decision. And then it's like, then it's like when it's crunch time, now they want to hear to make a decision, but you, you, you've already squandered your best years, the years where you were in high sexual marketplace value demand. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is the uh, this is the opportunity to really solidify a man of worth. Now, the thing about it is that women, you know, have a have a hard time gauging trajectory of men, because if you get a man younger, he's not going to necessarily be where he's meant to be. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have to make that calculated risk and, you know, take an actual guesstimation on what his trajectory is going to be. And. uh you know, or maybe you can actually influence his trajectory, you know, with the right support, you know, he may be, you know, he may be somewhere better than what he would have been by himself, provided he's with a good woman. Well, that that's just the our, uh, the environment the the that we in, that we're in. When uh, when the men were actually uh, did uh, mostly manual labor or physical uh, labor, they were valued uh, between the ages of twenty one and thirty five. Mm -hmm. But now. A uh, man doesn't enter his uh, peak earnings until uh, after the age of 35. So in other words, um, women's fertility and man's uh, value don't add up. They don't match anymore. No, no, they don't. No, they don't. So they, and, used to be, uh, they, they used to be in sync, but now they're way out of sync, like 15 years out of sync. Well, then now, you, you know, especially nowadays, the, like the, the actual jobs, especially here in the U.S., mm -hmm. they're becoming more technical. Mm -hmm. And so now men need, you know, the average person is going to need more school before they even enter the workforce, mm -hmm. like really enter the workforce. I mean, because you're going to enter the workforce younger, but you're going to be like little nonsense jobs. But actually entering your career mm -hmm. field is going to occur later because you need more schooling to actually prepare you into those career fields. Mm -hmm. You know, we start talking about STEM fields. Those are going to be the primary occupations here in the U.S. STEM and like computer sciences. Yeah, I mean, it, well, it would, if you look at any job, whether it's uh, it, whether it's STEM, whether it, even manufacturing, uh, anything like that, even trades, okay. Um, uh, by the time you start, you know, you're not, you know, you don't start uh, uh, in any field uh, making uh, top money at twenty one twenty, unless you're an athlete, like twenty one twenty two. Well, even athletes now don't even start making real their, their top flight money till they get like uh, in their late twenties. Mm -hmm. But uh, most 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 service jobs, you don't have enough experience until you get into your thirties. True, very true. So, but but women's fertility doesn't match that because that's biological. You can't change that. Exactly. So, and so then, and then a lot of men are not necessarily, you know, especially somebody like me. Mm -hmm. You know, at you know, even like up to like recently. I wasn't thinking about having any children. I mean, the thought that crossed my mind, but it's like I knew that's not something I wanted at that time. Mm -hmm. Even though, you know, some of the women that I was with during those time periods, they were wanting to, you know, settle down, get married, have children. It was just like I wasn't there, mm -hmm. you know, and but it's like they can't wait because they're on a time clock. Right. So I think that's the reason why, you know, it's more logical for a man to be with a younger woman. 
Yeah, it is. But the thing is, if if you if 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 uh, older men get with younger women, um, then that will actually uh, uh, skew things for younger men, and then <laughs> it's gonna, <laughs> and then you're gonna have to pair the, the 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 failed experiments which are which are older women with younger men. That's well, what, uh, you know what, the, which might be better, which might work out. Well, you know, also you have to look at. Um, you know, as you get older, your standards change. You know, so it's 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 not like you it's not like you know once you do actually want to settle down as a as a man, you're not going to be tapping into certain demographics of women. Certain mm-hmm. women you're going to avoid altogether because, you know, me as you're older, you know, you you elevate your standards. Mm-hmm. And so there's still going to be plenty of women available for the young men. May not necessarily be the women they want. <laughs> But they're out there because I hey listen, VGS. I had to go through that phase where I was getting <laughs> stuff I didn't really want either. <laughs> so if I had to do it, they got to do it, man. It's it's uh, coming to age. Uh, you know, right do, do you, you started off in single A, huh? Uh, I st- I started out I started out in the wheelchair league. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm talking about, man. I was, into, <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was, I was after the sick and the shut in, <laughs> yeah, trying to trying to get to the big leagues, huh? Yeah, I was in a chitlin circuit. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't shit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, let me. I gotta cut out of here, man. I gotta go. Do, yeah, do I'm gonna cut out of here too. Man, um, I, <laughs> I appreciate you coming by, uh, BGS. Your presence is always appreciated. Mm-hmm. And uh, thank you, everybody in the chat. Uh, again, if you haven't subscribed to BGS channel, make sure you do so. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has he has the best content out there on YouTube, in my personal opinion. And. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and me and uh, Don Calypso. Uh, I think sometime next month we're going to be talking about um, uh, uh, the uh, the gene editing for babies and uh, that kind of stuff. That's in fact, in fact there was one. I think you probably already heard about it. That the uh, the China in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to be talking about that. So um, um, I'll drop you a note and see if you can actually come on with us and actually talk about it. Yeah, I'll definitely look forward. Even if even if you guys got a full panel, I'll definitely be no, in no, the chat. It's, it's just gonna be me and him. Oh, but okay, if, okay, okay. But, uh, but if uh, you want to come on and make it a, a threesome, we can do that, man. Yeah. Okay, definitely. You can always count me in. All right. Uh, for anybody listening, I'm gonna re-upload this onto my channel. Mirror this on my channel because I actually requested this video. <laughs> so I'm gonna re-upload this on my channel in what in a few hours. And uh, hopefully I can steer some people toward your set channel. Super Trish is part of the family. So uh, come in and support him like you would support me. Appreciate it, BGS. So anyway, man, I got to go move some cars because it's street sweeping day. So I'll holler at you. All right. Till next time. All right. Peace. Peace. Okay. Again, that was BGS Ibmore. Please subscribe to his channel. Uh, before I cut out of here, um, I'm going to well, let me bring this mic back over here again. That was BGS. If more, please subscribe to his channel. Um, before I cut out of here, I want to I want to give a shout out to some people in the chat. Uh, Shantastic. Uh, thank you for joining me again. Shantastic. Your presence is always appreciated. Bomb Cherry. Thank you again. Bomb Cherry has a channel Creole and Cajun Living with Bomb Cherry. Please subscribe to her channel. Uh, she has some good content out there and she does do live streams as well. Uh, Frog Box. Um, always a pleasure. He's, he's one of the day one subscribers to my channel. Uh, thank you for box. Um, let's go down the list here. Poetic Kells. Oh, I didn't even see you on here. Poetic Kells. What's up with you? I'm glad you could drop by. Jump pile video. What's going on? Man, you should have hit me up, man. We could have got you on the panel. Ken 82 draw. What's going on with you? Good to see you, man. Ken 82 draws in the building. CRU Royality is in is in North Dakota freezing his behind off. So if there's any women in North Dakota that want to keep CRU Royality warm, he would greatly appreciate it. Again, any woman in North Dakota, which is probably not a lot of women, 
But any woman in North Dakota that wants to keep CRU royalty warm, please, please hit him up because he needs it. The Grinch God, what's going on, man? Please don't roast me today, man, because you, 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 be, you be getting on me. You be, you be roasting niggas, man. You, you out there. Respect you for dropping by. Uh, Rick's Mace. Rick's Mace TV News. Please subscribe to his channel. He's, he's based in the UK. He's holding it down. Uh, he's holding it down over there, you know, in the UK. Uh, please subscribe to his channel. He has some good content. He does some good live streams too. Again, that's Rick's Mace TV News. Um, and again, thanks everybody for stopping by. Uh, again, if you haven't subscribed already to my channel, please do so. Um, I do try to put out content when I can. Right now, things are kind of busy and hectic right now. I got to go to work tonight. That's why I got to get off here. So uh, I can't promise any consistency with my live streams. But uh, when I do do a live stream, I'll try to make it as good as possible. So, again, thanks again for everybody joining me. Uh, until next time.